The Downfall of Modern Astronomy, 50 Scientific Facts, by Ebenezer Breach. 1. The word astronomy is taken from the Greek words signifying the laws of the stars. Astron, a star. Nomos, a law. Nemo, to regulate, a science that explains the regulation of the stars. It is quite distinct from the science of physical geography, which belongs entirely to the earth. For astronomy, we must look up. For geography, look down. 2. The earth belongs not at all to the science of astronomy, as it is not a planet, a star, nor a heavenly body. The mixing of things by speech, which by nature are distinct, causes contradiction, circumlocution, and all absurdity. 3. The earth was created three days before the planets, therefore it is not in the order of planets, it is not a globe, and has never revolved a mile. It must be as fixed as a sundial to accomplish the remarkable phenomena, the precision of the equinoxes. 4. A planet is a wandering star. The earth is not a wandering star. A star is a burning lamp. The earth is not a burning lamp. The heavenly bodies are in the firmament of the sky. The earth is not in the sky, nor in the plane of the sun. Else when on the equator, you would see the sun in a straight line before you, but it is seen right over your head. The planets might well blush to own for company the earth so vile and stained. 5. The planets have a very eccentric motion. They occasionally slacken their pace, then stop, move backwards on their track, stop again, and finally resume their onward motion. If this occurred to the earth as a planet, everything must go to confusion and destruction, revolving as is supposed several ways at one time. 6. No revolving body whatever was ever made, constructed, or intended for habitation. Show us a revolving body, we show you an uninhabited body. Show us an inhabited body, we show you an unrevolving body. Ministers of the Church of England, see Homily 29, paragraph 15, which you vow to abide by at your ordination. 7. The non-revolution of the earth is every moment self-evident, but people have been so hoodwinked that false theories are believed before the testimony of the eyes. If true, no railway engine could keep the metals as the hand cannot be kept on the drum of a revolving shaft. 8. Every solid building must rest on solid foundations. That the earth is on its foundations is declared by the master builder thirty times over. Twelve times it is said to be established or fixed, four times on its pillars, once on its sure base that it should not move at any time. 9. At least three-fourths of the world's surface is water. Water always finds its level and moves till it does. Every calm sea is a true level, therefore three-fourths of the world's surface being level. Of what use is it to suppose the other quarter globular? 10. The late R. A. Proctor said, If the sea is proved to be a level, there is something wrong in modern astronomy. Ride Pier will prove it is, as it should be, sixteen feet under sea level, five miles across, five by five, 25 by 8 inches for rotundity, but it can be seen above the surface of the ocean from South Sea Beach or Point, with the testimony of Mr. Proctor, remarked, Ah, there they have got us, as the earth always appears concave. 11. The river Nile drops but a foot in a thousand miles. The island of St. Helena can be seen 100 miles at sea. The national flag of a ship can be discerned fifteen miles at sea. Most certainly, sir, the sea is a level, said a lifelong mariner at point one day. 
we have heard enough of the baseless vanishing ship theory to make us feel seasick all our life if we live to be a hundred years old. There is nothing in it but an optical illusion. 12. To suppose a globular ocean, a globular and revolving earth, and an earth full set in the ecliptic or sun's pathway, is a trio of folly, not to be tolerated in the mind of any creature under heaven. Lord slay England's darling sins of ignorance. 13. Modern astronomy is a suicidal science, for if its hypothesis were put in force, no creature could live ten minutes. There is no nadir, nor point of the heavens immediately under our feet. There are no antipodes, so Botany Bay is not under London Bridge, as the old lady said she had heard. 14. Nature is never absurd, monstrous, nor ridiculous, nor does it ever arrange for or supply the unnecessary. But the modern astronomers do, and have compelled the press to issue tons of the unnecessary, the absurd, and the ridiculous, have thoroughly humbugged ministers, colleges, schools, platforms, and families in all countries. 15. If ships go out to sea sailing over an orange-shaped ocean, they should as often be seen mountains high above the range of vision, as they are constantly seen hull down which phenomena is owing entirely to angular vision. Mr. Keith says we can only see distinct for three miles. By telescope, the ship will appear again as on a sheet of glass. I have proved this by the NAB light ship. 16. The Earth is the largest body with a solid crust in the universe. The stability of the Earth is due to the immobility of matter, unless acted upon by some exterior force for a given period. If the earth were anything but an irregular plane, the Jews must have known it, as their scientific knowledge was direct from God through Moses. Daniel declares that the greatest of the kingdom of the universe is under the whole heaven, not above it. The ancient Jews always considered the earth as a plane. They would laugh at our astronomers. 17. Mr. Keith says the voyages of circumnavigators as Cook, Anson, and Drake have been frequently adduced by writers in geography to prove that the earth is a sphere. But when we reflect that all of them sailed westward and not northward or southward, it is evident that they might have performed the same voyages had the earth been in the form of a drum or cylinder, which it is. 18. Navigation is the art of directing a course or ascertaining a position, when there are no landmarks, by means of objects external to the earth, as the stars, etc., also by taking a meridian altitude of the sun by a simple addition or subtraction. Mariners would not trust to artificial globes, but to charts as flat as the surface of the sea. 19. The foundation of modern astronomy rests on the fiat of Sir Isaac Newton, quote, the sun is the center of the solar system and immovable. This foundation was removed when Sir William Herschel discovered the motion of the sun towards Hercules, and the downfall of modern astronomy should have then been proclaimed. 20. All astronomers now declare the constant revolution of the sun through the circuit of the heavens and the twelve signs of the zodiac, which is the sole cause of the regularity of the seasons, and is so proclaimed by divine authority. See Job 38. If the astronomer's arrangement of the seasons were correct, four north stars would be required instead of one to keep the center of the earth in its four alternate positions. 21. As the late R. A. Proctor gives a correct and beautiful plate of the sun's path through the twelve signs for every month and day in the year, in his picture of the seasons he had no need of giving another plate to show the earth's orbit through the same signs, as such a phenomena has no existence. Sun's path cancels earth's orbit. Nature never allows the unnecessary. 
22. The imaginary orbit of the Earth was first estimated by Copernicus at 600 million miles, but a successor struck off 410 million, thus making it 190 million miles. So Mother Earth's course was exceedingly curtailed. When we mentioned this to Professor Ranson on Easter Monday, he laughed most heartily, as he did before when we reminded him that one astronomer had struck off 20 trillion miles from Bessel's measurement of the star 61 Cygni. The fixed stars cannot be magnified, not even with the Lick Telescope of California. 23. The astronomers have lately struck off 4 million miles in the apparent distance of the sun from the Earth, making it 91 million instead of 95 million. Professor E. tells us that they had lately discovered an error in the parallax of the sun's distance of a hundred million miles, which makes our measurement of the sun's distance of five thousand miles correct. We shall never require to strike off four million. 24. Millions, billions, and trillions are trucked about by the astronomers as though they meant tens, scores, or hundreds. But these all fall to the ground like dead birds with fright at a total eclipse of the sun at Portugal some two hundred years ago, when it was darker than midnight. 25. Astronomers have varied about the distance of the sun. Some have estimated it at only three millions, but to suppose the sun at any distance to have power without motion is absurd, or to suppose a rising and setting sun without perpetual motion is also absurd. 26. The sun is a concentrated body of light, heat, and attraction, not an expanded substance at all. It is anima mundi, the soul of the universe. And as no corporeal being has more than one soul, so the corporeal universe has but one sun. The stars are not suns, as has been foolishly supposed. 27. The sun as we measured it on the ecliptic, and by eclipses last August, is only 5,000 miles in diameter, half the diameter of the Earth, and not more than 5,000 miles, or its own diameter, distant. It could not be seen at all if it were at the distance alleged by modern astronomy, nor could the moon, as the greatest reflector in the universe derives its light therefrom. 28. Though the prediction of eclipses are correct by the metonic cycle, as used by the Chaldeans, the arrangement for them by modern astronomy is out of all proportions, and rendered impossible. 29. The moon's diameter is estimated by Joyce at 2,200 miles, and the sun's diameter is estimated at 882,000 miles. How can a disk that is only 2,200 miles, eclipse a disk the size of the sun at 95 million miles distant. Impossible and absurd. Two bodies to eclipse each other must bear the proportion of at least three to five. 30. The Earth's measurement in comparison with the sun is estimated as a mere speck, a dot, a point. A point has position in space, but no magnitude. How can that which has no magnitude eclipse all magnitude which the sun is made to represent? Impossible. We refuse to live on a speck, said an evening news reporter. 31. As the moon is but a fourth part the diameter of the earth, she is consequently but the fourth part of a speck of a dot, a point. What can be done with that? How can a grain of sand eclipse a pyramid? A speck St. Paul's? a point of a pin, the town hall of Portsmouth, again we say impossible. 32. It is supposed that an eclipse of the moon is caused by the earth intervening between the sun and moon. The earth is reckoned to travel 1,100 miles per minute. How long would it be passing the moon, traveling herself at 180 miles per minute? Not four minutes. Yet the last eclipse of the moon on February 28th lasted four and a half hours. So it could not be the earth intervening, 
as both luminaries were above the horizon when the eclipse commenced, and the spot of the moon could be seen distinctly through the shadow. The moon was also seen among the stars. Lieutenant Pierce agrees with the writer in the distance of the nearest star at 5,000 miles. How can your hat be trillions of miles away when it is on your head? 33. The Greeks noticed that the stars, planets, and all the heavenly bodies more or less eclipse each other, which proves how near they must be to each other. Mr. Proctor tells us, quote, There are many extinct stars floating in space which are called dead suns, and says it might be the case with our sun in seventeen million years. All that time for a sun to die, yet it is to be as good as dead at the time of the second advent, which is likely to take place in a few years. What will have become of their millions then? Mr. Proctor and all rationalistic men mismeasure the days of creation, which are measured entirely as solar days. If not, then the age of Adam, who lived on the sixth and seventh solar day, must be altered to, and all the days of Adam were five thousand, or five million, nine hundred and thirty years, and he died. However, the extinct stars, or some unknown planet, may affect the eclipse of the moon, or it might be a shadow cast from the surface of the earth, as the angle of refraction always equals the angle of incidence. This is the only phenomena we are not quite satisfied about. 34. The moon must be on the ecliptic at the time of the eclipse. The ecliptic is the pathway of the sun. Therefore, both bodies are at the same distance from the earth at the same time, and not more than 5,000 miles. There must also be a coincidence of the sun and moon at the time, and the moon must be in one of her nodes, a point in which her orbit intersects that of the sun. She is also among the fixed stars of the zodiac through which the ecliptic runs, which includes over 1,200 stars. Therefore, the nearest fixed star, Centauri, is not 7,600,000,000 miles off, which would make the railway fare at $1 per 100 miles come to 103 million pounds, as lately stated by Sir R. Ball in Portsmouth Town Hall. 35. The ecliptic being the pathway of the sun in the sky, it was sheer madness of Galileo to sit down and lift the earth in imagination into the ecliptic. It never was, never is, and never will be there. We might as well suppose a railway engine lifted into the moon. Therefore we strike it off the ecliptic straight. 36. It is stated by astronomers that the sun is three million miles nearer to us in the winter than in summer. But it is not so. The sun is, in reality, at least 180 degrees farther away to the south of us on the 21st of December than on the 21st of June. The sky is like a molten looking-glass, and the sun travels in a parallel spiral course continually, as Captain Perry, Dr. Nansen, and others have seen the sun circulate on the northern horizon for 24 hours so there is only one sun to do it. Seeing is believing. See Westminster Gazette, February 14th, 1896. 37. There is but one sun required to enlighten the whole of a circular plane. It makes the arc of a circle over one half of the plane, then another arc of a circle over the other half, setting to Europe and America, while rising to India, Asia, and Australia at the same time. If the earth were a revolving globe, we must see all the stars of southern constellations once in a year, but they can only be seen by those living on the equator. 38. No one is a true astronomer that does not thoroughly understand the sun, but can only be reckoned an amateur astronomer, whatever books may be written. At present, the greatest amount of assumption makes the greatest astronomer. A man, or mind, without assumption is no astronomer, but one that assumes that Noah's flood never occurred, though the earth is three-fourths water, to prove it, and is also loaded with the greatest amount of mathematical assumption, he is the greatest astronomer of the age, and is allowed F.R.A.S. to his name, which might stand for Fellow of the Royal Assumption Society, versus Astronomical, 
Euclid is only assumed demonstration. They make great discoveries of things that never existed, and spend thirty years of their life to explain phenomena that never occurred, as the second axis of rotation. 39. Mathematics is a science of certainty, when applied to abstractions in numbers, form, and quality, but pregnant with absurdity when applied to qualities or metaphysical subjects in which the data is uncertain, or hypothetical, or assumed, as in the science of astronomy. 40. In the science of astronomy, we only deal with the possible, said Professor Egerton, but in the science of chemistry, with the actual. We have it before us, therefore, it is unassumed. But mathematical astronomy is a futile source of popular error, in which all common and uncommon sense is misled. Ever since Galileo announced the mobility of the earth, and in imagination beheld it sweeping round the heavens in the precise track followed by the sun, all that the sun lost, the earth was supposed to gain. 41. Sir Richard Phillips, in his Milieu Facts, says, Nothing, therefore, can be more impertinent than the assertion of modern writers that the accuracy of astronomical predictions arises from any modern theory. Astronomy is strictly a science of observation, and far more indebted to the false theory of astrology than to the equally false and fanciful theory of any modern. 42. We find that four or five thousand years ago the mean motion of the sun, moon, and planets were known to a second just as at present, and the moon's nodes, the latitudes of the planets, etc., were all adopted by astrologers in preparing horoscopes for any time, past or present. Ephemerides of the planets' places of eclipses, etc., have been published for above six hundred years, and were at first nearly as precise as at present. 43. Sir Richard Phillips is utterly opposed to the fanciful theory of gravitation, and says, quote, It is waste of time to break a butterfly on a wheel, but as astronomy and all science is beset with fancies about attraction and repulsion, it is necessary to eradicate them. Every species and variety of attraction and repulsion are absurd. Gravitation is only another name for weight. What causes the apple to fall on the earth from the tree? Why, its own weight, to be sure. Nothing more required. Nature never appoints the unnecessary. If a law or object is unnecessary, it does not exist. 44. The stars or heavenly bodies are not kept in their orbits by hugging, tugging, and pulling at each other, but are as independent of each other as pedestrians walking the streets. Aristotle declared a grand truism that between the laws which regulate the celestial and terrestrial systems there is no shadow or affinity whatever. 45. Professor Rawson states that in some problems of astronomy they are obliged to consider the earth as perfectly at rest. Then why not in all, else they are deceiving people? But since our last lecture at the Albert Hall, he does not believe the earth is a globe. He is not a dogmatical astronomer and is willing, I understand, to come over to our side at last. So we gained when we measured the sun and measured the moon, examined the stars, and were home before noon. 46. No wonder that Professor Woodhouse should say, at Cambridge one day, that we have the senses, scripture, and facts on our side, which they have not, and if their mathematical theories were attacked, the whole range of astronomy does not contain the proof of its own accuracy and if the public lost confidence in them, as the proper authorities, the whole range of modern astronomy must fall to the ground. See the Earth Not a Globe Review, January 1896. In mensuration there must be two sides of a triangle, to attain the third by a proper instrument. What the astronomers have is a vanishing base. We make a fixed base of ten thousand miles, and by equilateral triangle heaven itself is ten thousand miles distant. 47. As the writer Mr. Ebenezer Breach, poet and author with the royal patronage seven times discovered, and proved by analogy, in the month of November 1871, that the sun is not larger than the earth, but only half its diameter, five thousand miles, also proved by measurement of the sun on the ecliptic, in September 1895, 
that the sun and all had been measured and misunderstood by astronomers, as everything is measured in the solar system on the basis of the sun's measurement. We never make a light larger than the place to be enlightened, nor is it ever placed farther away than is necessary, nor do we carry the room around the light, but the light around the room. We therefore declare the downfall of modern astronomy. 48. And as on the 1st of January, 1896, we discovered and proved immense disproportions and errors in the arrangements for eclipses, though they have always been correctly predicted by the metonic cycle, but which has no more to do with the arrangement and measurement of Earth, Sun, and Moon than Old Moore's arrangement for the weather has to do with the meteorological predictions day by day. We therefore most unhesitatingly and unflinchingly declare the downfall of modern astronomy, a very darling but most erroneous science, and advise all our fellow countrymen to do their utmost, to tread it under their feet, henceforth and forever. 49. In The National Reformer, some time ago, the great leader, Mr. Bradlaugh, said that modern science had surely sapped the foundation of all supernatural religion. We now beg to assert on the contrary that supernatural religion has at last sapped the foundation of all modern science, or opposition of science, falsely so called. The science of God will save you from rationalism. See 100 Proofs of Fixed Earth and Traveling Sun by Ebenezer Breach to be obtained of Smith and Seal, 71 Kings Road, South Sea. 50. Lord Bacon rejected the Copernican theory with scorn and compared it to a sleek, well-shaped hide stuffed with rubbish but containing nothing to eat. He complained that astronomy had with great injury been separated from natural philosophy, of which it was one of the noblest provinces, and annexed to the domain of mathematics. The world stood in need, he said, of a very different astronomy, of a living astronomy, of an astronomy that should set forth the nature, the motions, and the influences of the heavenly bodies as they really are. Of what value is a theory which is true only on a supposition in the highest degree extravagant? Sweep all such leaven out of your houses for ever. Amen. In the inhabited earth to come, they shall walk no more after the stubbornness of their evil heart. Let modern astronomy go to the winds, and natural astronomy have silver wings, since all the king's horses and all the king's men can never set Galileo in triumph again. As for the royal astronomer and all his clan, we shall come Lord Nelson over them. England expects every man this day to do his duty and at once to change the present accepted theory of the shape of the earth. As the president of the Geographical Society stated at the Portland Hall when Captain Nares went to the North Pole, we have found tropical vegetation as far north as Disco. If we find it any further north, we shall have to change the present accepted theory of the shape of the earth. Do it at once, lads, and let's have no more bother. We thank God we are as free from error as we are free of the gypsies, but we are determined to rout these stupid, extravagant, outrageous errors imposed upon the public for over three hundred years, and thereby one priest has been the means of deceiving the whole educated world. Signed, in the name of the Chaldeans, the real founders of astronomy, the Egyptians, Chinese, Greeks, and Romans, the true promoters, in the name of Hipparchus, the father and prince of astronomers, in the name of Ptolemy, whose system continued fourteen hundred years unopposed, in the name of Tycho Brahe, the greatest observational astronomer the world ever saw, who built an observatory on purpose to oppose that system, and in the name of Lord Bacon, and all that have not been misled, this day and forever.